you have to worry about what to do in a short time. Mainstream science just published a paper that destroys the comet narrative. 15 observational studies, thermophysical modeling, survival analysis across interstellar exposure. And the conclusion is brutal. 3i Atlas is inconsistent with cometary nuclei. Not unusual, not unexpected, inconsistent. For months, NASA told us it's just a comet. Now their own researchers are publishing papers saying it's a crystal relic with metallic domains and geological processing from an ancient planetary system. Two viable origins remain, a differentiated exomoon fragment or a lithified planetary crust piece. Both natural, both impossible for a comet. If you've been watching this object and felt something didn't add up, you were right. Hit subscribe now, drop a like, and let's break down the study that just forced mainstream science to admit what they've been avoiding for months. This thing is not what they said it was. When a mainstream astrophysics journal publishes a paper titled An Interstellar Crystal Fossil in the MR Relic Framework for Small Body Evolution, and the opening line states that 3i Atlas exhibits a unique combination of dynamical, compositional, and morphological anomalies, you know the narrative just shifted. This isn't fringe speculation. This is peer-reviewed analysis from researchers who spent months reanalyzing 15 independent studies, running thermophysical models, and testing survival scenarios across millions of years of interstellar exposure. They evaluated three origin scenarios. One, a differentiated exomoon fragment, a piece from an alien moon. Two, a lithified sedimentary planetary crust fragment, compressed, hardened surface material from a rocky world. Three, a weakly lithified comet, the explanation NASA has been pushing since day one. Here's what the paper concludes. The first two satisfy all constraints. The cometary scenario does not. Read that again. After crunching the data, testing the physics, and cross-referencing every available observation, the researchers determined that the comet hypothesis cannot reconcile the evidence. They didn't hedge. They didn't soften the language with further study needed or alternative models possible. They stated plainly that 3i Atlas is best explained as a high strength, geologically processed crystal relic capable of surviving interstellar exposure. This is the first time a mainstream paper has openly rejected the comet explanation while the object is still under active observation, and the implications are staggering. For months, agencies insisted Atlas behaves like a comet, outgassing from solar heating, tail formation from sublimating ice, standard physics, nothing unusual. But every new measurement made that story harder to believe. The paper systematically dismantles the comet scenario by showing where the observations and models diverge so sharply that reconciliation becomes impossible. Start with mass loss. The tail stretches nearly 5 million kilometers. The anti-tail, a column of material pointing directly at the sun, punches through 400 kilometer per second solar wind and holds its shape across 1.2 million kilometers. Professor Avi Loeb calculated that maintaining these structures would require the release of several billion tons of material over just two months. Hubble measurements place the nucleus diameter far too small to sustain that level of outgassing through normal ice sublimation. Surface area limits how much material can vaporize under solar heating. The math doesn't close. The object is losing more mass than its size should allow if it were a typical comet. Then there's the rotation problem. If Atlas rotates every 16 hours, as early measurements suggested, the million kilometer long jets should show spiral distortion. Rotating bodies release material in curved patterns. The centrifugal effect stretches those patterns into arcs, visible across vast distances. Atlas shows straight lines, no blur, no twist, no curvature. The jets remain geometrically perfect despite the object's presumed spin. Comets also tend to accelerate their rotation as they outgase because asymmetric venting acts like tiny thrusters. Atlas shows no evidence of spin-up. In fact, the straight jets suggest the opposite. Either rotation has slowed dramatically, which requires opposing forces that don't exist in simple sublimation, or the venting is controlled in ways that shatter every model of natural comet behavior. The brightness profile deepens the mystery. Typical comets display uneven coma brightness as different surface patches heat and cool at varying rates. Atlas shows uniform luminosity with no visible breaks or irregularities. 
That implies a centralized material source, not random ice pockets scattered across a fragile surface. The spectroscopic data makes it worse. No clear detection of the typical volatile mix, water, carbon monoxide, methane, in the ratios expected from cometary bodies. Instead, the readings hint at something chemically distinct, possibly altered by processes comets never experience. Every piece of evidence that should confirm comet instead raises doubt. The paper doesn't dance around this. After running the models and testing the constraints, the researchers concluded that the weakly lithified comet scenario is very difficult to reconcile with the observations. Translation, it doesn't work. So if it's not a comet, what is it? The paper proposes two scenarios that satisfy every constraint, a differentiated exomoon, relic, or a lithified sedimentary planetary crust fragment. Both share critical characteristics. Both require geological processing the kind of internal evolution that happens when heat, pressure, and time transform raw material into layered, chemically differentiated structures. Both support high density, explaining why the object resists tidal breakup and maintains structural integrity under intense solar radiation. Both accommodate metallic and hydrated domains, matching the spectroscopic and reflectant signatures observed so far. Here's where it gets fascinating. The exomoon hypothesis suggests Atlas is a fragment from a moon orbiting an exoplanet in another star system. Moons undergo differentiation when internal heat from radioactive decay, tidal friction, or residual formation energy melts and separates material by density. Heavy metals sink toward the core. Lighter silicates rise to the mantle. Water and volatiles concentrate in specific layers. If a collision or tidal disruption shattered such a moon, Fragments could carry distinct chemical fingerprints depending on which layer they originated from. A piece from the metallic-rich interior would be dense, stable, and loaded with elements like nickel and cobalt. A piece from the hydrated outer layers would contain water ice mixed with silicate minerals. Atlas could be a composite fragment, partially differentiated, carrying signatures from multiple structural zones. The sedimentary crust hypothesis offers a different path. Planetary crusts form through repeated cycles of heating, cooling, compression, and chemical alteration. On Earth, sedimentary rocks preserve layers of ancient material compacted over geological timescales. If Atlas originated from the surface of a rocky exoplanet or large asteroid, it could contain lithified sediment, material that was once loose grains or deposits but solidified under immense pressure. Such fragments would be harder and denser than typical comet material. They would resist erosion. They would maintain sharp structural features even under extreme thermal stress, and they would carry chemical signatures reflecting the planetary environment where they formed millions, possibly billions, of years ago. Both scenarios explain what comets cannot. The metallic content, the structural stability, the controlled mass loss, the resistance to solar wind pressure, and the uniform brightness. Both fit within natural astrophysical processes. But both demand a radical reclassification of what 3i Atlas represents. It's not a visitor from a comet reservoir. It's a geological relic from an ancient planetary system, carrying mineralogical and structural information we've never directly accessed. The paper repeatedly emphasizes the metallic component, and this detail is where the comet narrative fully breaks down. Comets don't have significant metal content, they form in the cold outer regions of protoplanetary disks, where temperatures never reach the condensation points for metals like nickel, iron, or cobalt. Those elements remain in gas or trace dust phases, never accumulating in concentrations needed to produce detectable metallic signatures. Yet Atlas shows them clearly. Earlier spectroscopic studies flagged excess nickel compared to iron, a ratio that doesn't match solar system comets or asteroids. The paper states that metallic and hydrated signatures imply crustal geological processing. Translation, the metal. Didn't condense randomly from a protoplanetary disk. It was concentrated through differentiation, the process where gravity and heat separate materials by density inside a planetary body. That's how you get metal-rich cores in planets and large moons. It's not how you get comets. If Atlas is a fragment from a differentiated exomoon or planetary crust, the metallic content makes perfect sense. You're looking at a piece of ancient planetary architecture, 
material that once resided deep inside a geologically active body. The nickel to iron ratio, the density, the structural stability, all of it aligns with a fragment that experienced millions of years of internal processing before being ejected into interstellar space. But here's what makes this unsettling. How did a fragment this solid, this processed, survive the journey? Interstellar space is harsh. Cosmic rays bombard passing objects. Impacts from interstellar dust grains erode surfaces. Thermal cycling from nearby stars can crack and fragment material. For Atlas to retain its structure across potentially billions of years of travel, it must be extraordinarily resilient. The paper describes it as a high-strength crystal relic. That's not poetic language. That's a physical description of an object built to last. The gap between official statements and published research has never been wider. NASA continues to describe ATLAS as a comet in public briefings. The European Space Agency's updates focus on orbital mechanics and observation windows, carefully avoiding the compositional anomalies. Yet here's a peer-reviewed paper written by researchers within the same scientific community, stating plainly that the comet hypothesis doesn't work. Why the disconnect? Part of it is institutional caution. Agencies move slowly. They wait for consensus. They avoid making bold claims that could backfire if new data shifts the picture. But part of it feels like something else, a reluctance to acknowledge how radically this object challenges our assumptions about interstellar visitors. For decades, the working model has been simple. Interstellar objects are either comets or asteroids, leftovers from planetary formation ejected into the void. Atlas doesn't fit that framework. It's geologically processed, it's chemically distinct, it's structurally advanced in ways that require planetary scale evolution. The paper proposes using the James Webb Space Telescope to distinguish between the exomoon and sedimentary crust origins. Specific spectroscopic tests could reveal whether the material came from a differentiated moon or a compacted planetary surface, but as of now, those tests haven't been scheduled publicly. The data remains incomplete, the agencies remain quiet, and the gap between what independent researchers are publishing and what official channels are communicating continues to widen. The paper's final conclusion might be the most significant. It states that these results suggest the existence of a new branch of classification for small bodies based on measurable physical parameters. Read between the lines. The existing categories, comet, asteroid, dwarf planet, don't accommodate objects like Atlas. We need a new framework, a new way to classify interstellar visitors that carry geological histories from ancient planetary systems. This isn't just academic taxonomy. It's a fundamental shift in how we understand what travels between the stars. If Atlas is a crystal relic, how many others are out there? How many fragments from differentiated moons, shattered planets, or compacted crusts are drifting through the galaxy carrying information about worlds we'll never see? And what does it mean that one of them just passed through our solar system close enough to study, strange enough to force mainstream science to rewrite the playbook? The paper doesn't answer those questions. It opens them. And that's what makes this moment so critical. We're not just looking at an unusual object. We're looking at the first confirmed example of a category we didn't know existed a geological artifact from an alien planetary system preserved across unimaginable distances, arriving at our doorstep with a story we're only beginning to decode. So here's the question. If it's not a comet and it's carrying signatures from an ancient world, what else is traveling through the dark that we've been calling by the wrong name? Drop your thoughts below, subscribe for what comes next, and share this because the story just changed.